TOA community. Welcome back, everybody. Robert Linkle, trainingtheolderadult.com. I wanted to talk to you today about a new article that came out, The Effects of High Velocity Resistance Training, HVRT, on Bone Mineral Density in Older Adults. This is a systematic review. Just came out here December 7th of 2023. Let's dive into this a little bit, and I'm going to give you a few examples of how we train this in-house. Okay, highlights. High velocity resistance training, HVR team, is defined as a rapid concentric followed by a slow eccentric phase against an external load. So let's take a deadlift as an example. The concentric is the way up with the weight. You are going to come up out of that deadlift with rapid concentric control. That means up as quick as you can, super dynamic. And then an eccentric phase, typically two to three, maybe even more seconds on the way down. Three, two, one, come up quick. Three, two, one, come up quick, et cetera, okay? That would be high velocity style of training. Um, there's high velocity training, which would not include load. So you would just be moving your body weight around quickly. And then there's high velocity resistance training, so that means we are moving at a high tempo with load in hand. High velocity res resistance training increases bone mineral density at the spine and the hip in older adults. It, it also increases at other areas, but these two areas in particular were studied in this uh, review of all these different articles we'll get into in a moment. Bone mineral density increased with uh, greater than two intervention sessions completed per week. So if you got at least two or more sessions per week, you had a great opportunity and then did show to have an increase in bone mineral density, specifically in those two areas, but in other areas uh, across the board. And then if exercise ceased for six months or more, then the skeletal benefits were then lost. And again, this is in an aging population, older adults. So how rapid the loss would vary from person to person, but there was loss. Loss did occur. Okay, let's zoom in for this one a little bit. Results here, 25 studies met the inclusion. Well, I guess it's not a huge view in, is it? 25 studies met the inclusion criteria. 12 were originally uh, intervention studies with 1,203 people in them. Okay, these studies, uh, meta-analysis went through, um, suggested the small statistic significant effort of high velocity resistance training on bone mineral density in older adults at the lumbar spine and the total hip and the femoral neck ranged from 0.9 to 5.4% increases in bone mineral density. Bone mineral measurements significantly decreased post-intervention in follow-up studies where interventions had ceased. So basically they continued to assess people and follow them as, the, as time went on after the studies were concluded and found that those that were not doing anything for about six months or more, their results of our bone density increases started to reduce. Okay, they started to go backwards. Dose responses, that means more, of a high velocity resistance training was shown to have a positive impact on bone mineral density of at least two sessions or more per week on completed on a regular basis. Conclusion, high velocity, resistance, high velocity resistance training plays a role in increasing bone mineral density of the lumbar spine, the femoral neck, and the total hip, okay? So these are the concerned areas if you fall that we're going to break and damage and can drastically change quality of life for somebody. You can fall and break your lumbar, okay? Your lumbar is your lower five uh, vertebrae in your back. So basically if you grab your lower back, oh, my lower back area, that's your lumbar, okay? L1 through L5. Then below that, it goes into your sacrum and your coccyx. Those are your tailbone uh, vertebrae. And then the pelvic bone, and then your total hip. In the hip, you have your acetabular socket, your femoral head, the neck of the femur that goes down into the femur. So your hip kind of looks like that, right, when you go in there. So they're talking about from L1 all the way down to the femor femoral neck. You're increasing bone density with two sessions per week of high velocity resistance training, minimum two uh, per week. You'll have the most skeletal, be most skeletal benef benefits, and if exercise stopped for six months, they were lost, okay? So when we talk about this in, in terms of how to implement, okay, 
basically, <clears throat> and, and in two videos ago, or just a couple videos ago, I talk about how do you select load and how should that load be progressed while you train. There's a couple different ways to do this, but specifically for this style of training, we're looking for a six to an eight. Okay, somewhere between a six to an eight on a one to 10 RPE rate of perceived exertion scale. <clears throat> so let's go through that real quick. If I pick up a weight and it's so easy, I can do it all day, no benefit, no, no damage, no harm, no foul, that's a one. If, if you said pick this up once and I could literally only pick it up one time, that would be a 10, right? That would be like as hard as it could possibly be to as little. So that's your one to 10 scale. You could also look at that as a zero or a 100% effort, okay? So on a one to 10 RPE, rate of perceived exertion, six is kind of ideal for this style of training. It's quite a bit lighter, but we're gonna move it faster. And as you progress, you could go to a six and a half, a seven, a seven and a half, maybe an eight, but no higher than that, okay? If we're looking at percentages, it's 60% to 65 and then 70 and then 75 and then maybe 80%. Or if you want reps in reserve, RIR, I would start with four. So that means whatever weight you can lift, when you get done, if you think I could probably do four more and that's about it, then that would be your low end. That'd be the low 60% or the six. And then if you get done and you're like, I could probably do two more, that'd be about your eight or your 80% of your RPE or 80% of your one rep max, okay? So let's consider loads being lifted here for Susan and Jerry. These are 50 to 60%, a five or a six, maybe um, you know six or eight RPE, or excuse me, RIR, reps in reserve. It's not heavy is my point. And just pay particular attention, okay? They're coming down quick, but they're also coming up quick, okay? And that's kind of the, the, the point of this tempo is like a one and a half to two on the down and then up with less than a one second. So we're looking at, I put like a two to zero is really what we want, like a one and a half, two on the way down, and then a zero or just as quick as they possibly can on the way up. That was a simple high end, like top half kettlebell squat. These were speed squats. So now we go to a split squat. We're doing our split squats. And in doing so, we're gonna do five reps and then they're gonna put a weight down and then they're gonna do five more and put the other weight down and do five more. So we're doing 15 reps, but we're stripping the weight. But the goal in this is to come up and change direction faster than they're coming down. So they're thinking like one second down and then less than a second on the way up. And you can see that change in direction, they're trying. And so knowing that you're going to fatigue, a way to combat that fatigue is to lessen the weight, to strip the weight as we go. So we started with two dumbbells. And then as we got to five reps, we started to fatigue, we get rid of five pounds and we go again for five reps and we get rid of five more pounds and we go again. So basically we're lightening the load as they're getting more fatigued, but we're trying to keep that same faster, quick turnaround tempo. Now I, I know that you might look at it and be like, I don't see a huge difference. There is a difference. They are trying physically to come up quick, control, come up quick, control. They're trying to do that. They're just four rounds into this and they are fatigued, but you can see it. You can see the change in up quick, especially Jerry in the back. You really see him popping up. Like he's, he's putting as much force through his replaced hip and his replaced knee in his lower back. He's putting tons of pressure through that. And this is good pressure, high intensity, high velocity, high intensity with resistance in hand. This is awesome. Okay. Another way to do this is through either a, a pulley system uh, an and core system or a flywheel, as you would see here, this is the East eccentric, uh, K pulley. And so on this, Elaine is trying to pull as she gets momentum, pull this guy in quick, but then turn over eccentrically control on the way back out on her K box her pull her, uh, squats here. She's coming up quick, controlling the down up quick, controlling the down. She's coming up as quick as she can using her arms to help stabilize and drive on the way up. Okay. And then we're gonna increase this intensity. You'll see on this last one, the flywheel's definitely picking up here as we tighten the belt for her and get her turn around, her top end speed to change that high velocity. Now, the beauty of the high velocity on the flywheel is 
as you create this momentum that's coming up, the flywheel is spinning, accelerating. It's going to take that momentum and throw it back down. So whatever momentum you create, you have to learn to decelerate, change direction and go. Now, so very quickly, it's going accelerate, slow down, change direction, accelerate, slow down, change direction, accelerate, slow down, accelerate. And you're doing that with every single rep. So there's constant tension. I'm trying to speed it up. I'm trying to slow it down. Now, when I go to change direction, you have to dig deep and really change that direction to drive back up the other, the other way. That stress that's put through the joints is what helps that bone density and the demand on that turnover. Not, over, not only does that turnover increase the bone density, specifically through the vertebrae, L1 through L5, your pelvic bone, your hips, iliac crest, the pelvis, all the pubic bone, all that, the femoral head, the femoral neck, and the femoral uh, stem, right all the way down the, the femur. All of those are being stressed under this change of direction. So the demand on the bone is, is placed high. So osteoblasts are going to lay down and create more bone density there, ideally, as it's processing, creating more bone dense, stronger bone in case of falls or just any demands of the body, the bones are dense. Also with this, the musculature, the neurological response of your mind saying, turn over fast, turn over fast. It's training your brain, your type two muscle fibers to react quickly, to be dynamic, to be explosive, okay? Now, when that training is now benefited, a client that catches their toes, stumbles, trips, and they normally take this slow first step that doesn't quite rescue their fall, it just accelerates it, then they do it again, it accelerates it again, and they just fall harder, rather than one dynamic quick step that rescues, because they've trained their body to move quickly. And they've trained their body, like we saw Susan and Jerry, in that split squat to be able to throw their foot out in front, decelerate, and actually push their body back to where they came from. That's where you're gonna see those catch your toe stumbles and the client just sticks their leg and stands back up. That's a, a massive fracture opportunity, okay? That's a very high likelihood fracture opportunity that was avoided because of this development in strength and this development in bone density the musculature can pull on the bone and move it fast without it breaking, without it detaching, which can be even more catastrophic. You try to pull your leg into position, but because you're so weak, but your body still reacted quickly, you then tear your, your uh, rectus femoris from, um, fr you know, from, from its origin uh, at the uh, anterior superior iliac spine. You, you've now ripped that off the bone. And so now you're in excruciating pain after you already fell down because your leg didn't get out into the proper position. You also tore you know, the, the bone, the muscle off the bone. So now I'm gonna have a, you know, a broken femur, a broken kneecap, along with a detached uh, rectus femoris. I'm, I'm in excruciating pain. I'm in massive rehab for six to 12 months, if not more, quality of life, is, is down the drain. And now we're looking at something that in most aging bodies, they are not gonna rehabilitate and come back to their normal abilities, let alone any better than they were. The older we get, the less likely you are to recover to full potential, okay? And, and especially with bone breaks around the vertebrae, lumbar, spine, your pelvis, and your femurs. Because this is such an efficient and effective way to train, and because it has such a good turnover, we do suggest, as multiple studies found, I think it was over 23, is what they said, 23 studies? Was that right? 25 studies that showcased high velocity resistance training and the benefit for bone mineral density. And it's done with a lighter load. So your risk of injury is actually quite a bit lower than if you were using you know, excessive or heavy loads. It's not to say that overload training is dangerous at any gym across the board, your overall uh, chance of injury is about 4%, okay? With eccentric trainings and change vari variation tempos like this, it's down to around three or a little bit less. So it's a very safe way to train. It's very effective. 
It's going to give you great return bone density, great return muscle mass, great return on improved power and strength, but also it's pretty safe and effective way to train and two sessions per week, ideally three. Okay. If you could, and you're doing some pretty simple uh, exercises across the board. Thoughts on this? Questions? Please feel free to fire away down below. I'd be happy to answer and engage in conversation. If you don't currently, please subscribe, ring that bell, help us grow the channel. Please share this information out. Anybody that you feel uh, would uh, benefit from it, we'd really appreciate it. Much love and appreciation to all of you out there. Hope you're doing well and enjoying uh, your holiday seasons. And here is to a uh, happy and awesome 2024 just around the corner. Love you all. Continue to fight your good fight against sarcopenia. We'll see you in the next one.